Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, which is Erev in Daf Lamed Beis. On Lamed Aleph Amid Beis, at the last line on the bottom, it says the Gemara, Omar of Nachman, Bir Shel Torah, when something involves it in Torah, Ein Chazaka Shliach, Oysi Shlichusoy. You cannot employ a Chazaka, presumption that a Shliach will actually carry out a Shlichus. Just because you appointed somebody as an emissary to perform a specific task, there's no knowing with certainty that he'll do the job that you entrusted him with. Perhaps he thinks, well, you asked me, but maybe you asked somebody else as well. Maybe you'll figure out another way to do it. So there's no knowing with certainty that he'll do it, unless you know for sure that he did it. Because perhaps he did it, perhaps he didn't. It's a Suffolk. And we know whatever comes to a day raisa, Suffolk day raisa l'chumrah. So there's no way to know, and therefore we can't employ the Chazok. However, Bishal Seifrim, when it comes to Adin Rabbonon, then we do employ the Chazok, Chazok, Shleich, Shleich, We say, well, certainly the person fulfilled the task that he was entrusted with. He did his job. So although there's some level of uncertainty, it's a Safak Rabbonon, and we go to Kul. Perhaps let's take a look at Rashi inside, on the bottom of Lamar Aleph, three lines from the bottom. So that's a kalima. He means to say, We don't rely on this chazaka, on this assumption. Unless we know with certainty, we saw that he did the job. Only then we know, but otherwise we can't make any assumptions. It says Rashi on top, from when it comes to other Rabbanon, then we do rely on the chazaka that the shliach performed the shlichus. Because at worst case scenario that he didn't do it, it's not so severe as the Rabbanon. Rashi gives us an example, so when it comes to establishing the Eruv, we can rely that the Shliach performed the Shlichas, as the Gemara told us earlier in Amad Aleph, that if you ask somebody to go wait for the Katan to bring the Eruv, you can rely on him because there's an assumption that he fulfilled the task that he committed himself to doing. So this is the sheet of Rav Nachman when it comes to the Rabban. Yes, the Yeraisa, no. Continues the Gemara. Rav Shesha Zamar. Echadzev, echadzev. Whether the Yeraisa or the Rabbanon, in both cases, yes, Chazaka, Shliach, Yisra Shlichusai. He considers this Chazaka to be a strong Chazaka. It's not, it's not just a suffix like Rav Nachman suggested it. Is. Therefore, he says, we can rely on this Chazaka even when it comes to the Yeraisa and we can rely that he did the Shlichus. Amar Rav Shesha Zamar. How do we know that this is the case? I'll bring you right from our Mishnah that we employ this Chazaki even when it comes to Din Torah. This not as we learned. Mishikar of Omer, once the Minchas Omer, which was brought on the 16th day of Nisan, once it was already brought, Hutura Chadash Miyad, the new crop, the new grains can be consumed immediately. So once you see the carbon being brought, you don't need to wait any further. For Rechaikim, however, the ones who live at a distance from the Beis Hamidash, Mishalayim, and they had no way of knowing the exact moment when the carbon was brought, says the Mishnah, Mutarim mechatsois hayam ve'elach. They are mutar to eat a new crop from the chatsois, from the midpoint of that day and on, because they rely on the kehanim, that they fulfilled their job, their task of bringing the mechatsa oimer. Once chatsois comes around, they know certainly it was taken care of, and they could eat the new crop. Says the Gemara, V'chadash da'raisahu. We're speaking about Isra Chadash, which is the Raisa, Uktani and the Mishnah tells us, The ones who live far away, Amutat Iti Chadash, from a midpoint and on, from Chatzais, when they know that the Gehanim had already brought the carbon. Now the Gehanim are the Shluchim, they the emissaries of Kal Yisrael. Apparently we see, even when it comes to Isa Torah, we can be rest assured that the Shlia fulfilled his task. Lav Mishum is the reason not because Chazaka Shlia is the so we see clearly, says Rav Sheshes, even when it pertains to Din Torah, we can be rest assured that the Shliach fulfilled this task. So the Kashar of Nachman, who tells us by Din Torah we can rely on the Shliach. Answers the Gemara of Rav Nachman, who will respond, Hosam, over there, it's based on another reason. It's not a simple Shliach. Hosam, as the mission itself provides the reason. Because everybody knows that Bezdin, who's in charge of the, of the, of the Kohanim, of things, 
uh, things happening correctly, they'll take care of the Mincha Sa'imer. The Bezdin will make sure that it was brought and offered on the Mizbeach, and therefore the Rechaikim rely on the Bezdin. Not on the Shluchim, on their Shliach, perhaps it's not reliable, but it's Bezdin that's getting involved here, and therefore we know Shane Bezdin is Aslan Boy Bezdin are not lazy and lax when it comes to this, and therefore it's something that can be relied upon with certainty. There's another version of this Gemara that Rav Nachman actually brought a riot from this Mishnah to support his view that when it comes to the Torah, you can't rely on a standard Shliach. Because the Mishnah specifically tells us the reason there is because of Bezin. Apparently, that's unique. Because Bezin is reliable, but ordinary Shliach is not reliable. Vigad the Amri, some say, Omar of Nachman, Amila. How do I know that this is true, that when it comes to a Din Torah, we cannot rely on your standard Shliach, the Tani Taimah, because the Mishnah specifically tells us the reason how the Minchas Omer can be relied upon. Because they know that Bezin are not misasal, not lazy, not lax when it comes to this Hakrava. Apparently, it's because of that reason. Bezin, who do I misasal by? The Bezin are not going to be lax when it comes to this carbon. But an ordinary shliach would perhaps be lax and lazy and disregard his obligations and therefore you cannot rely on a shliach. This is actually the writer of Nachman and a kashitur of Sheshes who tells us that even a shliach can be relied upon. Says Mara Sheshes, Amalach, he'll respond to you. Even an ordinary shliach can be relied upon. The chiddush there is bezin al de yoyma that when it comes to something that Bezin is involved in, you can be sure that they'll take care of it by the time Chatzos comes around, by the time the Palga, the Yom, half of the day comes around. And therefore, the Rechaikim know with certainty that from Chatzos and on, they're mutter to eat the Chadash. That's unique when it comes to Bezin. They expedite things. There's reason. However, no Nei Rishliach, perhaps, he's not so diligent, but at the end of the day, he'll perform his task. Shliach kuli yoyma. When it comes to an ordinary shliach, as long as you give him the entire day to perform his task, wait till the end of the day, then you can be rest assured he fulfilled his task. The chiddush here is that the Rechaikim can be certain that when it came, chatzois, the Oymah was already taken care of, and that is strictly due to the fact that Bezin was involved. Because otherwise, they would have to wait until the end of the day to know with certainty that the shliach, in this case the Kehanim, fulfilled their task. How do I know that my view is correct? That a shliach can be relied upon even when it comes to a din Torah. The sanya, ha'isha leida. Oyziva, if an isha has an obligation to bring a carbon upon her birth, upon the leida, upon the ziva days that have been completed, so she needs to bring a carbon of birds, mevia mois. So all she does is bring money, venesenes v'shayfar, and throws it into the pushka, the shayfar shaped pushka which was in the besamidash. She places the money there knowing full and well that the Kehanim will take care of the carbon, they'll purchase some birds and bring it on the Mizbeach. And based on that assumption, she proceeds with Teveles. Now she's Teveles, and she can partake in eating Kachim that very night, knowing that her carbon was already taken care of. My time. Why? How can she rely on the Kehanim who are merely Shluchim, they're emissaries? La is it not because we say, Damrinan, Chazaka Shluchusai? So very clear that by a deraisa we rely on the shliach. So the kashan of Rav Nachman says, "Of Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman will respond hasam to Rav Shmaya." The halacha there is based on Rav Shmaya. Once again, we employ the concept of bezin here. Do Rav Shmaya? What is the reason the isha can rely? Chazok in bezin shel kayanim. There's a chazok that the bezin of the kayanim, meaning the ones who are in charge of the of the avoda there, they'll make sure. They don't get up. They don't get up from their place. Until all the money was in the shayfar was removed, was taken care of, was addressed. The birds were brought. The kabbalists were taken care of. So it's best that she's relying upon. And they certainly are reliable and dependable. How do I know that when it comes to the rice, so we can't rely on the shleich, the sanya, as we learned in the price. If one person tells his friend, say, Go ahead, and you can pick some figs from my fig tree. So the person who picks the figs can go eat. All right, meaning if he wishes simply to snack, 
to have an informal meal, that's mutter. Because there's no chiv of Truma Maisur. When it comes to just an achilas arai, since <clears throat> these figs were not yet nigma malachtan, so at this point he can go ahead and eat arai, eat an informal meal, without separating the Truma Samashers. But when he decides to have a suda skva, a permanent, a fixed meal, which at that point is a chiv of truma maser, says the bray sum ashram vaday. So at that point he has to separate the truma samasras and treat it like vaday tevel. He knows with certainty that the figs here are obligated in truma samasras. They're vaday. They're certainly tevel. Meaning, there's no reason. There's no even chance that the owner. The owner who owns the tree had somehow addressed the chivam of Tumas Amasras here by doing him a favor and taking care of the master by perhaps separating some master from a different location to accommodate, to exempt these figs that he's picking. You know why that's not, there's no chance that that happened? Because he doesn't even know how many he picked. He told him to go pick some figs. He didn't give him a quantity. So there's no chance that the owner had addressed the chivam here. Therefore the picker has to be ma'asar vada, he has to treat and assume that there's a certain chiv here, it's vada chiv. What about the next case? Mali l'cha kalkola zu te'enam, mitenasi. So the owner tells him, fill up this kalkola, this basket, fill it up with figs from my fig tree. Now the owner knows, he quantified it. So now there's a chance perhaps that the owner addressed the chiyuvim, perhaps by separating the trumas and masters from food that he had at home, to exempt, to accommodate this fellow. So once again, oichel men arai. When it comes to eating an achilas arai, a snacky meal, a, a um, informal meal, that's okay. There's no need to take care of the chumas and mashers. But once it gets down to a serious meal, where the chiyav will apply, says the b'raiso ma'ashron d'may. He assumes that it's d'may. D'may is just another way of saying that it has suffix. D'may is the produce purchased from ma'aretz, where there's some level of uncertainty as to whether the Amaretz had separated two Muslim masters. So there's a whole Masechta, Masechta Tumai, he needs to go ahead and dress it somewhat. He needs to remove two Muslim masters, but in a Suffolk fashion. He's not meant to give the Master Rishon to the Levi, Master only to the, to the poor person, because there's a Suffolk there. So this fellow who's going to pick these figs, after being instructed by the owner to fill out the basket, since there's some percentage of a chance that the owner being that he knows the exact amount that he's picking. We'll try to accommodate the picker. The more tells us we're speaking about Amaretz, who's going to, who was picking the figs. So perhaps the owner wanted to accommodate him, wanted to make sure he doesn't do anything wrong, doesn't eat anything inappropriate. So therefore he's going to separate two Muslim on his behalf. So there's some level of uncertainty here. That's what the Bible says, um, Ashran Tumai, so the picker does the Maiser, but assumes that it's only a suffix, whether or not it's terrible. Be'medvar Mamur. When will we say that in the second case, when he fill up the basket, he treats it as a suffix, be amharetz? When the owner was an amharetz, unlearned fellow. So there's a concern that um, on one hand maybe he took care of the tumors and meisters, on the other hand maybe not. Maybe he is not really too concerned about the picker eating something inappropriate and. He didn't take care of anything. Therefore, the picker needs to treat it as a suffix and separate just on the chance that he needs to do so. So that's only when the owner is Amar. It's Ava B'chavar. But if the owner, the one who instructed this fellow to pick, is a Chavar. So Chavar is a term used to classify a certain type of person who conforms behaviorally to certain types of guidelines which classify him as a Chavar, makes him dependable and reliable. So, if this person was a chavar, a trustworthy fellow, in this case, the picker can eat freely without any concerns of maaser. Why? This is the sheet of Rabbi who holds that if the owner is a chavar, he's not going to take chances. He's going to certainly do the truma maaser on behalf of the picker. He's going to feel responsible for him and feel obligated to prevent him from doing any iser. So in this case, says Rebbe, there's no suffix whatsoever. Whether or not this thing was taken care of, certainly the chavar separated Truman's and Masters even from the figs that he's going to pick. And therefore, 
the picker has no need to be concerned. Rav Shem Gamliel Oimer, just the opposite. But Medva Mamur, when does this halacha apply that the picker needs to address this, these figs with uncertainty, he needs to treat it as my, but I'm aretz. When the owner was not aretz, so there is some chance that perhaps he did accommodate the picker and remove the trumas and maestros. There's a suffolk. I will be chaver. But if the owner is a chaver, who's meticulous about performing mitzvahs properly, in this case, just the opposite. The picker cannot eat unless he removes trumas and maestros. Not only does he do trumas and maestros, but he treats it as a vaday. He knows with certainty, without a shadow of doubt, that this, that these figs are tevil. Why? Why is a chaver owner worse than Amaretz? Says Hashem Gamliel, because we know that the optimal way of separating tumas from Isis is minam mukaf. Separating from something which is close by. To do something from long distance is not the optimal way of doing tumas from Isis. It's minam mukaf. It's not meant to do it. Some say it's the Rabbana, some say it's the Raisa. So says Hashem Gamliel, there's no chance in the world that a chaver had separated Tumas and Mises from a different location to address these figs. <laughs> these fellows are not suspected of doing to do Tumas from a distance. So there's no chance in the world that he took care of it. So therefore he says just the opposite. If the owner is a chavar, there's more reason to suspect that these, picks, these figs being picked are tevel. Not only tevel, of vaday tevel. So we have this machlekes, if the owner is a chaver, according to Rebbe, there's no concern whatsoever. According to Shem Gula, just the opposite. At this, in this case, we treat the figs as vade tam. Oma Rebbe, nirin dvoraim divrei abu. My approach, that the chaver is to be dependent upon for the trumas and maestres, actually seems to be the more correct approach than my father's approach. His father was Shem Gula. Why? Although, I know that it's not it's not uh, optimal to go ahead and separate Truma at a distance. But still, he'll do it in order to prevent his friend, the Yama'aretz, from doing something wrong. Mutav shiyachshadu chaverim. Better that the chaverim should be suspected of. Litram shleim mukaf, Which the Gemara Tumah tells us is a relatively small iser. Rather than do that, v'layachilu l'ama'aretz t'valim. Rather than they go ahead and feed or cause the Amoritz to be fed a tevel. So he's willing to sacrifice, so to speak, in order to, to safeguard the Amoritz's spiritual well-being. Now, especially in this case, we're speaking that the Amoritz, the Chavar, in his mind, thinks the Amoritz perhaps is relying on me. He thinks that if I give him something to eat, it's permissible, it's mutter. Therefore, he takes responsibility and he separates the Truma Maestros on his behalf. Okay, so this is Machlekes between Rebbe and Shem Liel regarding this specific question. Would the Chavar do the Truma long distance or not? Now, the context of their Machlekes is only pertaining to this specific detail. Elder Mar HaSavach, next should do Rebbe holds that the Chavar, the Chavar are suspected of doing this, meaning they'll go ahead and forego their, their um, less than optimal way of doing Truma in order to Accommodate them arts. Ma'asabar len nechshadu, the chavar wouldn't do it. Okay, so it's a specific question. But regarding the general question pertaining to al sugi, when somebody is being relied upon, a shliach, can we say, well, with certainty that he'll go ahead and perform his task, he's dependable, or perhaps not? Regarding that question, we seem to see from this b'risa that a shliach is meant to be relied upon. Because this owner who instructed this fellow to pick the figs? It's like, it's like he's being a shliach because he knows that the, that the picker depends on me. He thinks perhaps that the, that the picker depends on him. And he expects him to give him something which is mutter, take care of the miser. So we see from the b'risa that a person who's being dependent upon will come through. Is meant to be trusted. It says, Ma'avakuli yama all agree chazaka shliach haishishlechusay. That we do apply this chazaka, that a shliach, somebody that's being dependent upon, is trustworthy to fulfill his task. The kasha are of Nachman, because this is concerning Truma, Maiser, which are rooted in Din Torah. So we see, even when it comes to this, a shliach can be dependent upon. So the kasha of Nachman. 
So that's more of Rav Nachman. He'll respond as follows. Hosam Rav Chanina Chuzo. That locha there. Why do we rely on the owner to address the chiyum of the fruit? It's based on Rav Chanina Chuzo's statement. It's unique. It's special. It's not your typical shliach. In that case, the owner feels especially responsible to take care of the fruit. The Omar of Chanina Chuzo Chazakahu Al Chaver. There's a Chazaka that he Chaver. Who feel responsible? She ain't a mighty dover. She ain't a masukim metachas yadi. He won't allow something which is not permissible, something which is not appropriate, to leave his possession. That's a unique case where the owner feels personally responsible. It's my food. I'm feeding him something which is inappropriate. Therefore, in that case, certainly, he'll fulfill his obligation and make sure that what the Amaris is eating is mutter. In contrast to your typical shliach, he's sent to do a task. Well, he thinks. He sent me, maybe he sent somebody else as well to cover up for me. Maybe he'll take care of it himself. He doesn't feel so personally responsible to fulfill that task, and therefore he's unreliable. Let's take a look at Rashi inside, ten lines from the bottom of the Amit. Beginning with the words, Metachas Yodei. So the Chavar will certainly be meticulous when it comes to something which is leaving his possession. Since it's his fruit that he's providing, Rami. It's his responsibility. He's concerned about presenting a, a stumbling block in front of a blind person. So that's unique to this case. Never all agree. The owner is to be relied upon. But a typical shliach who accepted a task from his friend, there's room to think. He just gives up. He doesn't do it. He figures out. He's not really depending on me. He doesn't take it so seriously. Therefore, says Rav when it comes to Adin Torah, we can't rely on the Shleach, there's some level of uncertainty where they fill the task. We want to go to Chumrah. But in our case, where the owner is providing this, this fruit, he feels personally responsible, he doesn't want to present a, a mirsho, a pitfall to his friend, therefore there's room to believe that he took care of the obligations. Okay, so in summary, when it comes to the question whether a Shleach performs a Shlichas, so when it concerns Adin Torah, Rav Nachum says he's unreliable. Sheshah says he is. Concerning the Rabban, all agree you can rely on the Shlich. All agree when a Bezin is involved, they're reliable. And Zagmar concluded regarding the Chavar with the Truma, he is too one to be dependent upon. Continues the Gemara. Amar Mar, so we just learned in the Brisa. Ahmed Vamamur, this was the case where he told him to fill up the basket, so he knows he quantified the amount of figs. Therefore, we say there's some. Suffolk here that perhaps the owner took care of the Truma Master. Therefore, the picker assumes it, treats it like a Suffolk when it comes to his obligations. When is it said that it's a Suffolk? If the owner is not Maritz, if the owner is a Chavar, he can eat freely without any concerns, because we assume that the owner took care of it. Says the Gemara, so we spoke about an Amaritz owner. This Amaretz, the Karmelay Laman. Who is he speaking to? Who is he instructing to pick the fix? What type of person? Elema the Karmelay, the Karmel Amaretz Chavri. Are we speaking at the Amaretz owner? Is speaking to the Amaretz who's his friend? And we say, well, we speak to the pick and we say, well, there's a suffix here. We don't know if the owner took care of it. You must treat it as a suffix, as Zmai, and remove the tumor maestris, misafik. Masterin to my meet Sayas, the Amaris, the picker. He's, is he going to listen to us? He, he's an Amaris just as the owner is an Amaris. He trusts him. He, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't believe us. He wouldn't take our word seriously if when we tell him. You know, you purchased this, you, you got this from Amaris. We don't know whether the owner was so meticulous, whether he felt responsible for you, and whether he took care of the Tumas or Maestris. Treat it as the my. Go ahead and Remove the truma, me suffolk. Because the only was only the only was only an Amaretz, it wasn't a chavar. Well, if we're speaking to an Amaretz, he trusts the, the, the Amaretz owner. In his eyes, he's Amaretz, so the owner who's Amaretz is also very trustworthy. He won't listen to us. He won't think, well, the Amaretz owner didn't address the, the chiyum properly. Only a chavar does it, but not Amaretz. In his eyes, Amaretz is just like a chavar. Me size, will he listen to us? So apparently he can't be speaking about a case we, we, where we are addressing and I'm Aretz here. When the pick is I'm Aretz. Ella, apparently, but I'm Aretz, the Karmelay Lechavr. 
What happened was the Amar's owner instructed a chaver to pick the figs. So now it makes sense. We tell the chaver who picked the figs, listen, you're not meant to rely on the owner, perhaps he didn't address the chiyuvim here, treat it as a suffix, and be ma'asr these fruits as though it would be a, a dmai, because the Amar's owner is not really somebody to rely upon. Perhaps he didn't really take responsibility and didn't take care of the Shumas and Maises. So that makes sense. The owner is not Maritz, who instructed the Chavr to pick. And now we turn to the Chavr. We tell him, you must treat this fruit with uncertainty. Okay? So if that's the case, the owner was not Maritz, and the picker was a Chavr, aim must safe. Let's proceed to the next, the next case of the, of the Bryce, where the Bryce told us that if the owner was a Chavr, then things switch around, things change. That Rebbe tells us, when the owner is a chaver, we are certain that he took care of the chiyuvim, and the picker can eat it freely, without any concerns. Let's proceed. The owner was a chaver. So Rebbe says that the owner is reliable, and therefore the picker has no concerns. My opinion seems to be more correct than my father's opinion. We can assume that the owner addressed the Tchiv of Tumas and Maestros. Why? Mutav shiyachshadu chaverim literally shleim na mukav. Better that the chaver should be suspected of doing something slightly inappropriate to do the Tchumah at a, at a distance, shleim na mukav, which is not the best way, most preferred way of doing Tchumah, rather that he, he does that than risk feeding the Amaoretz something inappropriate. Vayachilu Amaoretz tvala. Therefore, he's willing to do that. That's the shita of Rebbe. So if the owner is a chaver, you can rest assured that the picker was Amaretz need not be concerned because the chaver, he looked after the well-being of the picker was Amaretz, made sure that he'll eat something only appropriate, make sure to take off Tumas and Maestros. One second. We just said that the picker was a chaver. And now we're saying the chaver is concerned about the picker was Amaretz? Perhaps we'll just assume things are okay. Oh, Amir, it's my very awesome. What's the Amir doing here? I thought the, the picker was a chaver. So, in the, this part of the Brysa, which discusses picking a basket full, we have two cases which seem to be inconsistent. The first case seems to be speaking about a case where the Amir was the owner who instructed the chaver to pick the figs. And the next case, we discuss the case where the owner was a chaver, but who was picking? This time it was Amir. Is the picker a chavar or a ma'aretz? Says Umar Ravina, you're right. These two cases describe different scenarios. Reisha ba'ma'aretz, sham lechavar. The first case indeed was an ma'aretz who instructed the chavar. The sefer, the second case was bechavar, sham ma'aretz. Indeed was a chavar owner who instructed the ma'aretz who picked the figs. So they reflect two different cases. So the sefer was the owner who was a chavar who instructed the ma'aretz. And therefore, it makes sense what Rabbi says. Well, let's assume that the Chavar addressed the Chiyuvim here because he, he's concerned for the safety and well-being of the picker was Amaretz, perhaps. He won't take the Chiv too seriously. He'll eat something inappropriate. Therefore, he, he makes sure that what he eats is mut. So he instructed Amaretz. Now, continues the Gemara, there was another Chavar standing there and listening into this conversation. Because, again, the entire context of our discussion, the fact that we say, well, the, uh, this produce is, is chayav, d'may, right? You have to, you have to treat it, you have to assume that there is some level of uncertainty regarding the, the status. That can only apply to a chaver, because a amaretz doesn't take it too seriously. So when we speak about the person being allowed to eat it, apparently at the end of the day we're speaking about a chaver, who would like to eat it? Who comes to ask us a shayla, can I eat this fruit? So earlier in the Bryce we said, well, you must take care of it as though it's my. And in this case we say, well, since the owner was a chaver, who instructed an Amaretz, in which case he's concerned about that Amaretz's well-being, he'll make sure to take care of the Tumor of Maestro. And therefore now, when it pertains to the chaver who's coming to ask us, Amaretz won't ask us, it's the chaver who's concerned. So what happened was there was a chaver listening into this conversation. Perhaps the Ritva says he was being fed by the Amaretz. So now he comes to the Rav, he wants to know, can I go ahead and eat this food without any concerns? 
The other chaver was listening to the conversation. He wants to know whether he's allowed to eat this. Rabbi Savar, yes. This chaver who was listening to the conversation is being fed by the Amarts, the picker. He can go and eat his food without any concerns. Why? The vada isuri ma'aser. Certainly, the the first chaver, the owner, isuri ma'aser. How chaver kama? The first chaver means the owner. Certainly took care of the ma'aser iluyom iluyom. Certainly took care of, took care, took care of the ma'aser from these figs. So again, we're speaking about a case where the owner was a chaver. He instructed an amarts to pick a basket full of figs. So he quantified it. He knows how much is there. Rebbe maintains the chavar will be concerned about the safety and the well-being of the Amarts. Or perhaps we'll just make assumptions and eat things based on assumptions that the owner took care of it. Therefore, the chavar does take care of it. He looks after it. Now, this entire halacha of the Brysa, as the more explained, really pertains to a chavar is coming to ask. Amarts wouldn't come ask. He makes assumptions. He eats it freely. So apparently there was another chavar involved here as well. Although the picker was the Amaret, but perhaps he was feeding it to another chavar, and that chavar wants to know, what is the true status of this fruit? Says Rebbe, he can safely assume that this fruit is mutter. Because since it was a chavar, owner, who was instructing the Amaret to pick the fruit, he certainly would look after the well-being of the Amaret, thinking perhaps the Amaret is relying on me. I'm not going to give him something which is aser, and have him eat something pro- pro- prohibited. Therefore, he goes ahead and does the tumor of the even... If it's Shulay bin Amukov, even if it's at a great distance, it's not the optimal way of doing the truma. And the point is to prevent his friend from doing something wrong. So who's actually eating it? The Gemara says it's actually another chavar who's standing by, who's listening to this conversation. And then the Amarats who picked the fruit offers him a fruit. He wants to know whether, you know, he's meticulous. He wants to know whether he's allowed to go and eat it. He comes to the Rav and wants to know if this is mutter. The Rav says yes. Because since it was the chavar feeding the Amarats, meaning he, he allowed the Amarats to pick this fruit, He's going to look after him and make sure the fruit that was picked is kosher. So that's the Rebbe Shit. Rav Shimon Leel Sav Aymer, he has no loya yoichal. This second chavar here should not take part in this fruit. Achi Yasser. Until he does maser with certainty. <laughs> it's not a suffix. He knows for sure that this is table. Why? Because the chavar is not suspected of doing truma at a distance. Shleim and Amukov. Therefore, Pshum real holds when the owner is a chavar, you have no reason to believe that this fruit requires trumas and maestris. With certainty. As Tevel about it. Vamali Rebbe. And Rebbe responded to him, No. Mutav shayachdu chavirim literam shleim and Amukov. Better that you suspect the chavar of doing something slightly inappropriate. Like removing the truma shleim and Amukov. He's willing to do that rather than feed his friend something which is aser. Vayachilu amaretz tvolim. Says the more Michael Mifligi. Well, what's the point of the disagreement? Says the more as follows. Rabbi Savar, Rabbi Oz Nichale Lechaver. The Chaver is willing to transgress a, a small iser, so to speak. To do a surah kalila, to do a small iser, a relatively light iser, which is doing the Truma Shleim and Amukav. Some she just holds it to Rabbanan. Some teachers told actually with the rice, but it's not like Elin Tevel, which is Misa. Therefore, he's willing to sacrifice spiritually for the sake of the Amaretz's spiritual well being. He's willing to do an Issa Kal so the Amaretz should be prevented from doing a grave Issa. Let's see Rashi up on top, on the top line, Issa Kalila, the slight, the small Issa, Shalom and Amukov. Now, doing the Truma at a distance, rather than the Amaretz eating the Tevel, which is Issa Rabba, Lechel Tevel. So he's willing to do that. Therefore, we say that the Chavar addressed the Truma Maestro at a distance. And you could eat it with certainty. Continues the Gemara. Rabbi Shimon, Lil Savar, he holds no. Nichale le Chavar, de la Avadam Aretz Rabba. No, the Chavar is willing to accept the fact that the Aretz will even do a grave iser. The Iu Afili Sura Kalilali of it. So that he himself should not transgress even a small iser. So it seems like Rebbe holds that this fellow is relying on me. He's, he's picking my fruit. He thinks that I'm going to take care of the spiritual aspect of his fruit as well. He's fully relying on me and depend on me. Therefore, I can't let him down. I must be willing to do even an Isra Kal to prevent him from Isra Chama. 
Whereas Rabbi Shimon holds, perhaps he's not so reliant on me. He got to pick my fruit. I didn't tell him. It's kasha fruit. It's of a tree. Why should he think that it's not tevel? Therefore, I'm not willing to do even a small iser in order to prevent it from doing a gravis. So in summary, we have a brysa and two parts to the brysa. The brysa begins by discussing a case where a person says, Laket l'cha teinim, mi teinasi. He doesn't give him a quantity. He just says, pick some fr- figs. In this case, the owner, since he doesn't know how much he's picking, there's no chance they did anything regarding the Truma Master. We're speaking about an Amaretz owner who instructed the Chavar to pick those dates, those figs, and the Chavar comes to the Rav and wants to know, what is the Halacha? The Halacha is, he's Chay of Vada. He must treat it as Vada Tevel. There's no chance in the world that it's not. And the save of the Bryce that we have, Kalkola Zu. He instructed him to fill up a basket full of figs. He quantified it. In this case, there's some element of uncertainty. Perhaps the owner will address the chiyuvim of Truma Samaisers. So we have two cases in the Seifa of the Bryce. We have a case where the Amaret's owner instructed the Chavar to pick those figs. And the Chavar must treat it as a suffix, because perhaps the owner addressed the obligations. So it's Chayiv and Maisim, it's only Mesafik. Whereas when the owner was a Chavar, who instructed Nama Oretz to pick those figs, as the Mora told us, there was another, another Chavar standing by, listening to the conversation. And the Chavar would like to know, what is the status of this fruit picked by the Nama Oretz? Now we have Machlik, according to Rabbi, he's certainly Potter, because the Chavar will certainly address the obligations. He doesn't want the Nama Oretz who's picking to do any Avera. Whereas the Shunum Lil holds, just the opposite. In this case, when the owner was a chavar, he's fully knowledgeable about the halachas. He's meticulous about doing the truma properly. He won't separate the truma at a distance, shleim and amuka, which is not the proper way of doing it. And therefore, the picker must assume that it's a vaday tevel and be mafresh the truma so masters with certainty. Continues the Mishnah. Getting back to the halacha of Erev Tchumen. So it's placing the food at a certain location. That becomes your Mokim Shvisa, your Shabbos residence, allowing you to walk from there, 2000 Amma. And the point is that the food creates the, the Dira. That's your source of sustenance, of livelihood. The Mokim of the Muslim becomes the Mokim of the Dira. Now, what results from this is that the food needs to be very close, close proximity to the Mokim Shvisa, in order to accomplish the Mokim Shvisa. Now, how close does it really have to be? We're going to see in our Mishnah and the upcoming Gemara. Says the mission in the Sun of Elon, let's say he placed the food of the Arab up on a tree. If it's above ten tfachim on the tree, the Arab is not valid. If it's below ten tfachim, it's perfectly fine. The Gemara will explain for us the background and the context of this Mishnah. Continues the mission in the Sun of a boy, place it in a pit. I feel like I'm even if it's a hundred amas deep, it works fine. Says the Gemara, Yosef is the following Amaroim was sitting. Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Rabbi Asi, Rabbi Bar Nassim, the Yosef Rav Nachman Gabay. In addition to them, Rav Nachman was also sitting by the Yosef Amri, and he was sitting and saying the following. They were analyzing the mission. The mission speaks about a case where he places the Erev on a tree. Above Tent Fachim, it does work. Below Tent Fachim, it works. Hi, Elon, this tree discussed in the Mishnah, the Kay Echa. Where was it situated? Ilema, shall we say, the Kay Bishasar Yachid, who's sitting in Rishasar Yachid, a place enclosed by Bechitzes. Mali Lamala, Mali Lamata. If so, what difference does it make if the air was placed above 10 or below 10? If it's in Rishasar Yachid, the Rishasar Yachid domain extends upward from ground till sky. It's all one Rishas. Rishasar Yachid, Oida Oida Adler Rakia, goes all the way up to the sky. So the air, whether it's placed up on the tree or down on the bottom part, part, portion of the tree, it's all one area. It's all one Rishasar Yachid. So it's irrelevant. Apparently the tree was situated in the Rishasar Says the Gemara, Okay, where did this person intend on making the Makam Shvisa, establishing his residence? Where? On the floor, on the tree, where? shall we say He intended on establishing a shvisa up on the tree near the Erev. Then there's no concern. Him, meaning the makam shvisa, his residence, and the Erev is in one place. So what's the problem? 
Ella must be the Neskava and Lishbeis Lamat. Then he intended on establishing his Shvisa down below at the foot of the tree, at the base of the trunk. So that's where his Shvisa is. That creates concerns, because if the Erev is below Tent Fachim, so it's together with him. He's in Rishis and his food is together with him in the airspace of Rishis It's below ten, it's within ten to the, to the ground, it's Rishis But if he placed it, Lamala Masar, above Tent Fachim, which is a Rishis Hayachit, because we're speaking about a tree which is Tent Fachim high and Fort Fachim wide, so he placed it up in a different domain. His Shri is down at the base of the tree, which is Rishis His food is up in Rishis he has no access to it. He can't conceivably retrieve that food during Ben Hashemoshes when the Erev takes effect. Therefore, it doesn't work. But if he was Meskav and Lishboi's Lamata, if he intended on establishing a Shvisa at the base of the tree and the Erev the food is on the tree but below Tent Facham, meaning within the airspace of Shisarab, that's okay. Because they're both in Shisarab. Says the Gemara, Okay, the food is in the same rishus as this fellow. But there's another problem. He can't remove it off the tree. One is not meant to use a tree on Shabbos. Perhaps there's a concern he might pull off some branches. So he doesn't really have access to his Erev during the onset of Shabbos. The Bindi Ba'ash moment when the Erev is meant to take a hold and take effect. So this also poses a problem. So even if he's in Rishus the Erev is within Tent Facham and is also in Shus Ram, but he can't get it off the tree. There's no access to it. So how can that food create a Makam Shvisa? Says Umar, Makam Shtamash Be'ilon, he's using the tree. Lo'olam the Kaib Shus Ram. Actually, we're speaking that he's in Shus Ram, Vinaskav, and Shvisa Lamato. Sorry, Lo'olam the Kaib Shus Ram means, yes, actually the tree is situated in Shus Ram. Vinaskav, and Shvisa Lamato, and he intended on establishing the Shvisa down below at the base of the tree. What about pulling the, the food off the tree? The Rebbe, he, who found Shittas Rebbe, the Amar, who said, Kol Dova Shum Shum Shvus, anything which involves an Isadur Abonon, Shvus is describing the Isadur Abonon on Shabbos, for instance, pulling something off a tree, Loi Goz Rola Ben Hashemoshes, that doesn't apply to Ben Hashemoshes. So at the onset of Shabbos, meaning when the Erev is meant to take hold, during the twilight period between Friday and Shabbos, at that point in time, there's no Isadur Abonon to use a tree, so since he has access to the Erev, at that moment, the Erev can take hold. So according to this approach, we're speaking about a tree which was in Shusarabim. His Shvisa was at the base of that tree. So if the Erev was on the tree above Tent Facham, which is a Rishus it's invalid. Because he's in Shusarabim. His Erev is in a different Rishus. He has no access to it. When the Erev is meant to take effect. Whereas if it's Lamata Masfar, Sarah, if it's below Tent Facham, within Tent Facham, of the ground, which is the airspace of Shisaram, then that's okay. How can he get it off the tree? During Ben Hashemash, there's no Isra of using the tree. Amr Lur Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman heard this interpretation, he responded, Yesha, correct. V'chenem Hashemol, this is exactly how Shemol interpreted the mission. Amr Lur, so he responded to him, Pasrisu Ba Kuli Hai, have you interpreted and analyzed this mission to this extent? He says, what do you mean? In Unami, Hachika Pasri Ba, they as well analyze it to this extent. What was their what was their uh, surprise? Ella hachi amule. This is what they told him. Kavisa lebi gemara. Did you actually establish this pshat of the Mishnah in your gemara to pass it on to the generations as pshat in the Mishnah? Amalu in. Yes, indeed, this is the correct approach, and this was established in the gemara. It's manami. We learned likewise. Amar Nachman Rashmol. Hacha beilon. Our Mishnah speaking about a tree. Ha'emin mishus arabim, which was situated in mishus arabim. Askina. Gavoya asar bracha abba. It was ten tefachim high, had a surface area four wide, and he intended on establishing his shvisa down below at the base of the tree. So if the Erev is above on the tree, above ten tefachim, there's a concern, because it's shayachid, if it's below ten, it's okay. How is he going to access the food from the tree? And the Yisadur Abban on Shabbos, doesn't apply to Ben Hashemashos, so this Erev works fine. Because he has access to the food during Ben Hashemoshes. Amarab, lo yishonu. When the Mishnah tells us that the tree which is in Rishon and his Makam Shvisa is at the trunk, the base of the tree, 
and the Arab is above ten tefachim, it doesn't work. Leishana, this is only said Ela bi'ilon ha'imed chutz libur shalir, regarding a tree which is sitting out in the wilderness, outside the ibur of the ear. So we have the city and we have the ibur, like a pregnant woman. The ibur is the extension of the city, which is about seventy tefachim outside the city. So the municipal boundaries, the halachic boundaries of the city, extend up until that point, until the ibur. That's considered to be part of the city. So if the tree is sitting outside that area, out in the middle of nowhere, then the halach of the Mishnah is applicable. Avol ilan ha'imid, b'seichi bura shalir. But if the tree is situated within the municipal boundaries, then afilu l'malam ha'asara hariz erev. Even if the erev is above ten tefachim, it is perfectly fine. Why? The Masa commanded Mal Because a city, entire city, is considered as though it's filled up. Filled up with homes, filled up with earth. Because it's one large residential area. We regard it in the context of Erev Tchumen, of course, as though it's one large residential area. Not only the city, but even the Eber, the extension of that city, is considered to be one unified unit of residence. And therefore, says Rava, when this fellow who established his residence at the base of that tree. And this tree is in in the uh, confines of the city. We view the entire area as though it's filled up, as though his residency extends upward for ten tefachim. So you can reach that area. He's sitting on ten tefachim off the ground. So the area is not inaccessible any longer. He's in Rosh the area is Rosh and everything is fine. Because again, the, the point is that within a city, it's all filled up. It's all one residency. Therefore, his shvisa at the base of that tree extends upward. And he is together with the Erev in the same location. Says the Gemara Yehachi. So based on this concept, even if it's outside the Eber of the city, you can also apply the same concept. Why? Since Rabbi told us, when one places food for the air of Tchumen, Yesh the, the air of the, the, the food extends for four Amis. Meaning, four Amis next to that food is considered to be like a Rosh it's, it's a place of residence. So if every Makam Shvisa of air of Tchumen is considered like a Rosh like a place of private residence, so when he's sitting under this tree, which is sitting out in the wilderness, but his Makam Shvisa is the Dalad Amis of Rosh which extends upwards. We know that Rishayachet is Adlerakiyah, goes up all the way to the heaven. So it extends upwards, 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 until he gets to the air, which is on top of the tree. Him and the air are in one singular space. If so, the place of the air is considered like Rishayachet, like a private area. We know that Rishayachet extends upward until, it's, until the Rakiyah. So even when the tree discussed here, is sitting out in the wilderness, outside of the municipal boundaries of a city. Well, nowhere. But if he was Kevea Shvisa, established his Shvisa at the base of that tree, any person who establishes Shvisa, that Makam Shvisa, that personal space, is like a Shayachet, according to Rabbi. There's four armies of a Shayachet there. And when Shayachet goes upward, till the Rekia. So all the air was up, high on the tree. His Makam Shvisa extends upward, till he reaches that air. If so, him and the Erev are contained in one singular space. So what's the concern of the Mishnah? Why, if he places the Erev up high on the tree, is the Erev not good? Omar Yitzchak Breda Meshash. You're right. Hacha, however, in this case, we're speaking about Bi'ilon Hanoite Chutz La'arba Mesaskina. We're speaking about a tree which has a branch which is extending horizontally from the trunk of the tree, past four Amis of the base of the tree, of the trunk of the tree. So he establishes Shvisa at the base of the trunk. He places his air of where? On the branch, which is extending past four Amis from the trunk of the tree. So it's past, it's past his Makam Shvisa. His Makam Shvisa is here. The air of his past is Makam Shvisa. It's not on the same airspace as his Makam Shvisa. And therefore, it's inaccessible to him. Since the air is up on the tree, which is Shusa Yachet, and he is in Shusa So again, Hocha Bi'ilon Hanoite Chutz La'am Ramas Askin, I was speaking about the tree which is protruding, leaning past, extending past for Amis of the 
the trunk of the base of the tree. And he intended on establishing his Mokim Shvisa Bikari at the base of the tree, down below, in Rishisaram. Now, although we just mentioned that the Mokim Shvisa is considered Rishisayachet, explains Rashi, we don't literally mean that it's a Rishisayachet for the sake of Hitzah, allowing to carry on Shabbos, because it's not in a closed area. It really means that it's his personal residential space. But literally speaking, he's in Rishisaram. Therefore, the Mishnah tells us as follows. When we have a tree, and he is, Shvisa is down below, we have that branch, which extends past, way past the trunk. So the air is placed, not above the airspace of the Makam Shvisa. It depends, says the Mishnah. If he places it on a branch, which is within 10th Facham to Rishisarab, and you're okay, because the Arab and the person are both in Rishisarab. Whereas if he places it on a higher branch, a branch which is above 10th Facham, which is Rishisayachit, then it's no good because the Arab is Rishisayachit. Whereas the person is Rishisarab. Says the Gemara, Umay lamala, umay lamata. Now the Gemara is going to have a semantics concern. The wording of the Mishnah seems a bit difficult. The word lamala, lamata denote that we're speaking about the same thing. For instance, you have a trunk of a tree. And lamala is the upper location of that trunk. Lamata is the lower location. Lamala, lamata are referring to two locations in one object. Now, here we're speaking about a question of whether you place it on the lower branch or the upper branch. As Rashi explains, the term namach and gavoy would be more appropriate. Namach describing the lower branch and gavoy the upper branch. Lamala, lamata seem to be both speaking about the same, one and the same object, two locations within that object. Umay lamala, umay lamata. Says one of the other zakaf. Actually, we're speaking about the same, same object. The same branch, which begins, it comes out of the trunk at a low point, within 10 tefachim to the ground, and then hadar zakaf. It bends upward, reaching beyond 10 tefachim. So it's actually the same branch we're speaking about. The question is, did he place the air lamata on the lower portion of that branch? Within ten to the ground, which is Rishus Rabbim, or Lamala, on the upper portion of that branch, which is Rishus Hayachet, which case is in a different location than the person. Says the Gemara, okay, Vahi boy, but if he would like, Maislo Derech Olaf, he has access to his Erev, even if he places it on the upper location of that branch, which is Sayachet, but he can go ahead and transport that Erev during the moment of Ben Ashmashes to his location. How? He's going to take the area from the upper portion, which is Susayachet, over the airspace of the lower portion of that branch, which is the Kamblis, over to the trunk of the tree, which is considered like Susayachet, and it's above his Makam Shvisa. It's within the airspace of Makam Shvisa. So since he can do that, let's consider the air to be fully accessible and kosher. Says what is a problem. Kisharava Makatvanalov was speaking in a case where the lower portion of that branch was being used by the Ram, by the public, to be a makatif, to adjust their loads on it, and therefore has a dinner of Shusarab. So the airspace above that lower portion is considered Shusarab airspace. And that prevents him from transferring from the upper portion of that branch, which is Sayyachit, over to the trunk, which is Sayyachit, through the airspace of Shusarab, which is not allowed. Ukdullah Azula told us, the Amar Ula, Amud Tisha Shusarab, if you have a post, which is no, it's fucking high. In the Shusarab. The Rabbim Makat for love. It's used for the, for the Rabbim to be Makat to adjust the loads on it. That's considered Shusarab. The Zorak for Nachal Gab of Chayv. One throws onto that post his Chayv because it's considered to be a Shusarab. And that explains the Lachan Al Mishnah. Therefore, he can't transport above the airspace of this branch, which is a Shusarab. Therefore, placing it on the upper portion of that branch, which is Sayachet, when the owner is sitting down in Shusarab. It's inaccessible to him. And therefore the Erev is invalid. So in summary, we spoke about a tree which is situated in Rishis Rabbim. The fellow had intended on establishing his Shvisa down below in Rishis Rabbim. Mishnah tells us, if the Erev is accessible to him, if it's within Tent Facham in Rishis Rabbim, then it's okay. But if it's above Tent Facham in Rishis Ayachet, he is in one Rishis, the Erev is in another, and therefore it's inaccessible to him and cannot be used for the Erev. Okay, time for a brief review of today's daf. We began discussing the halach of shliach oisus lechusa. Can one depend on a shliach to fulfill his task properly? According to Rav Nachman, when it comes to doy raisa, no. To Rabban, yeah. According to Rav Sheshis, in both cases, is reliable. All agree that a bezin is reliable. Or in a case where a chaver allows the amaris to consume his figs, 
In this case, he assumes responsibility for that marat, and certainly he will address the truma meiser from those figs. We learned in a brayser that if an amaret tells a chavar to pick some figs, so if he didn't quantify the amount of figs, then we can assume it's vaday tevel. But if he quantified, he said fill up this basket. Then it depends. If the owner is an amaret, then we have a suffolk. Perhaps the owner did do the meiser for him. Therefore, he must treat it as a suffolk tevel. If the owner is a chavar, Rabbi says in this case we can safely assume that the chavar removed the tumors of meisers for the sake of the amaret. Therefore, it's pot. According to Shem Gamliel, just the opposite. In the case where the owner is a chavar, we can safely assume he did not do the truma meiser at a distance. We learned about a case where a person placed an air of tchumen on a tree. So the tree was in Rishasarab, and he intended on establishing his shvisa down at the base of the tree, which is Rishasarab. So if the Erev is above, beyond Tantfachim, which is Rishasayachet, that won't work. But if it's within the airspace of Rishasarab, then he and his Erev are both Rishasarab, and the Erev is kasha.